I want my MTV. Guys, thank you for joining me. My name is Steve Westman here at The Audio Files. We're going to have a look at two albums today. Abbey Road's Brother in Arms, new really released Half Speed Masters. We're going to have a look at this, break it down. We're also going to have a look at MoFi's Brothers in Arms. Let's get started right now. I'm ready to do this. Let's go. Just so excited to get this one started today, guys. Welcome to the Audio Files. I'm Steve Westman. We're going to have a look at MoFi's and Abbey Road's 45 RPM Dire Straits Brother in Arms. Let's have a look at that today. Um, but first, I wanted to just thank everyone for watching my channel, first of all. And uh, just one caveat before we start. These two albums are never going to get to $1,000, so uh, I'm not going to... Don't worry about that. They are uh, great albums, but I'm not a thousand dollar album. So I was, got overwhelmed response from my last video, the uh, Bob Dylan Desire MoFi, uh, and my, uh, I guess my thoughts on where it would be over the next year or so. So um, again, it was just, it's just all just, you know, a guess based on the market, um, where things are at. I come from a finance background, so I look at sort of undervalued stuff, which is quite interesting. And then going forward, just uh, so you know, a little bit more about me and uh, you know being a vinyl enthusiast for you know since I was man a little guy in the 80s uh, loved records loved music still love music obviously um, you know I'm in the film and TV business here in Vancouver been doing this for many years now so I'm fortunate enough to you know be able to talk to many people from the different industry and you know get you know their uh, take on things so it's a pretty cool position to be in so I'm uh, hoping to bring some of that, uh, I guess, experience and some of my, uh, you know, experience over the years to this channel to help you guys. I want to make this an awesome channel. Um, I want it to be the place to go if you guys are looking for different uh, audio file or MoFi uh, vinyl ideas or or what the scoop is on certain things going on. So I'm not a YouTuber. I mean, I'm you know starting this channel, but I know you need lots of views and you need. I want to make this thing big. So, I mean, I, um, I'm dedicated to you guys and uh, I want to get more subscriptions. So if you haven't subscribed already, bottom, subscribe now. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, I, like I said, I have no skin in this game. I'm going to do something really cool here. I want to see a thousand subscriptions on my channel uh, by July the 1st. Okay, so by July the 1st, a thousand. We get to that. I put every subscriber in there. I'm giving away my own very own personal copy of the Beatles 50th anniversary. So you'll get this. I will ship it to you as well. I'll pay for the shipping as long as it's uh, within uh, North America, continental North America, Canada, United States. So we get to a thousand by July the 1st. All thousand go into a pod. I pick one. I ship you out this. I mean, get let's get it going, guys. I am excited for this. So there you go. That's my that's my offer to you, um, just to show you I'm committed to really getting, really giving you guys the most information and some really pertinent information as well, really help you make choices as an audio file. And maybe you're just, you know, starting out collecting vinyl. Um, I'm hoping this channel can really help you with that as well. So someone can have this, we get to a thousand. So I'm hoping to do that. So thank you. A couple things as well. Um, many, many of you guys know me from the different uh, Mobile Fidelity or MoFi Facebook groups around. I just want to give a shout out to JP. He runs the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab Enthusiast group on Facebook. Join his group if you haven't already. Um, I founded the MoFi Buy and Sell, I guess it's the MoFi Audiophile Buy and Sell Club on Facebook. If you want um, really good deals on different MoFi or audiophile pressings, it's a great community, great bunch of members. Join that group, absolutely join that group, MoFi Buy and Sell on Facebook. And uh, there's also the Mobile Fidelity Sound Lab fan group as well. Join that. You get to see all the different members, uh, different pressings and, and really interesting topics as well. So a shout out uh, to Mike C. I already mentioned JP, guys. Hi, Clay, Eric. Hope you guys are doing well. Dustin, hope you're doing well. Mark, hello. Ape Man, how are you? And all the different mics that I know. Hope you guys are watching. Let's get this channel to 1,000 before July the 1st. I want to give away my uh, personal copy of the uh, Beatles 
50th anniversary box set. It is amazing. Um, I will, and you, know, you guys will enjoy it if you haven't already. So again, thank you. So let's get started. Where is it here? Here it is. This is the MoFi version. We're going to have a look today, a look at MoFi. We're going to have a look at Abbey Road's 45 RPN Dire Straits Brother in Arms. But before we do that, a little bit of background on this. Now, the guitar you see, this guitar, I mean, this is an iconic album cover. I mean, I remember, I've seen it so many times. I mean, I bought, I think my mom bought me this cassette back in 1985, for either my birthday or Christmas in late 85. So I never did own the uh, the vinyl pressing, uh, just the original vinyl pressing for everyone. It is actually, press, it was cut by uh, Robert Ludwig, the great Robert Ludwig, famous Robert Ludwig. Um, he cut the vinyl in uh, 1985 for this pressing. Now the guitar on here um, is actually Mark Knopfler's personal guitar. It's a 1937 14 fret national style O resonator. Uh, they were made in uh, 1930 to 1940. Pretty cool. Um, I always wondered about it, so I wanted to look it up to see what uh, what, it, what it was. And uh, sure enough, that's Mark Knopfler's guitar. So I mean, again, an iconic label. I uh, sorry, an iconic type like album cover here. I mean, we've seen it for all these years. And, you know, all in, I mean, if you're a Dire Straits fan, this is an, you know, incredible album. So let's dig a little bit deeper into, into the Dire Straits uh, Brothers in Arms album before we sort of talk about the two different uh, pressings that Mobile Fidelity and uh, Abbey Road Half Speed Mastering have out. So Brothers in Arms, this is Dire Straits' fifth studio album it was released in may of 1985 the album went nine times platinum guys nine times platinum that's insane that's huge that's ginormous that is incredible that's 30 million copies sold worldwide insane it was nominated for uh grammy for best record of the year or best album of the year it didn't win i had to look it up phil collins phil collins album no Jacket Required was Album of the Year, won the Grammy that year, beat out this guy here. I had to look twice, but you know what, Phil? Way to go. And that's another thing about Phil Collins. Why hasn't he been voted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame as a solo artist? Makes no sense to me at all. I think that's another topic as well. Um, but this album was did win a Grammy in 1986 for Best Engineered Album of a Non-Classical Release. It was produced by Mark Knopfler and longtime producer of Dire Straits, Neil Dorsman. It was a well-produced, well-engineered album from beginning to end. Dorsman also, um, if you guys are interested, he also produced, he also was part, engineered um, Dire Straits' Love and Gold, which is another fantastic album as well if you haven't picked it up. And he also um, was, he also worked on Knopfler's Local Hero soundtrack as well. So long time collaborated with Knopfler. Uh, again, they produced this album, incredible. Um, I guess it does probably make it easier for the mastering engineer when you're you know, re-releasing re, re these albums or reissuing these albums to uh, have an incredibly produced album to work with, I guess. So Brothers in Arms, just so you know as well, guys, from an audiophile point of view, uh, this again was recorded on a digital machine. It was one of the first albums recorded on the Sony 24 track digital tape machine. So Knopfler being the perfectionist that he is, he chose the digital way because he wanted the best possible sound quality for this album. He chose the digital way. So it was recorded fully on a 24 track Sony um, recording machine. So some of the songs on here, I'll list them off. I mean, so far away from me, the opening track, you got Money for Nothing, uh, Walk of Life, Your Latest Trick, Why Worry, Ride Across the River, The One, the one Man's Too Strong, One World, and of course, of course, Brothers in Arms. I mean, from beginning to end, I mean, this is an album. You just It's so incredible to, to play and listen to and just sit there. It really brings emotions, I mean, at least to me as well. Um, you know, with the way Knopfler plays his guitar and his singing and, and definitely his lyrics as well. So, um, like I said, I've been listening to this album since 1985 and uh, still can't get sick of it. It's, it's amazing. So, I was mentioning some of the songs. Now, this is during sort of the, the height 
this album actually was during the height of MTV. It was also during the height of the big push to get people away from vinyl and into CDs. So this album actually was the very first album that sold 1 million CDs. And one of the big reasons why it did is because when Philips Electronics in the mid 80s was pushing their CD players, they'd also give away a free copy of Brothers in Arms with any Philips CD player that you purchase. So that obviously helped Dire Straits get to um, a million in sales and CD. It's also the first, first album um, where the CD out CD outsold either the tape or, or the uh, the vinyl pressing for the band as well. So that's quite quite interesting. So it really was, I think, the real catalyst. This album, um, just maybe the timing thing, was the catalyst for um, where we really saw CDs taking off. Which is interesting because um, you know I, I think in one of my last episodes I was talking about um, how vinyl sales peaked, and the last time vinyl actually outsold. Um, the CD was like 1986. So, I mean, this is around that time, right? So, um, quite interesting. Uh, we're seeing sort of a vinyl resurgence again, but uh, yeah, so this is the very first CD that sold a million copies and of course went on uh, to sell 30 million in, in the different, uh, you know, either tape, you know, cassettes, uh, CDs or, or vinyl. So, m mentioning some of the songs again, we were at sort of the height of uh, MTV as well. I mean, the song Money for Nothing got huge airtime in North America. I mean, um, it was actually the very first video that was aired on MTV Europe when MTV Europe um, debuted in, I think it was like August of 1987. Um, so, and I mean, it's iconic, right? <laughs> I want my MTV, Sting set, you know, sing, um, singing the melody. Now, sing, Sting actually got a co-credit um, writing credit for this for that uh, song and if you listen closely um when you hear i want my mtv the me the melody is very similar if not the same to his song or the police's song uh don't stand so close to me so i didn't know that i had to look it up i thought that was quite interesting so pretty cool um so another thing too at knopfler mark knopfler is trying to um really get a certain sound for this album he was trying to achieve, and you guys will know this from the mid 80s, he was trying to achieve that ZZ Top sort of guitar sound, um, which in a lot of the tracks, you know, is very apparent. So that's what he was really trying to do. And go back and listen to it, maybe listen to a couple of your ZZ Top uh, albums and you can you know really hear, hear the similarities between them. So yeah, so that's sort of a little bit of breakdown on, I guess, a, you know, what happened with Dire Straits uh, Brothers in Arms and sort of the history of it as well. I thought that was really cool thing, thing, you know, things to share with you guys. So hopefully that really does help. So since I'm holding, holding the MoFi version, I thought let's talk about the MoFi, MoFi version first. So let's just compare the, compare the two um, between Abbey Roads and MoFi's version. So this is a gatefold. Most of you guys probably have it. If you don't, it's a gatefold front, the back. Um, it's numbered. It says special limited edition. Now, um, this is this is on back order. It's going to be repressed again. So if you guys are patient, you can pick one of these up or order it on Music Director MoFi for $49.95. Um, I've seen a few on the MoFi Buy and Sell Club on Facebook um, for sale as well. And on Discogs, um, prices go anywhere from 63 bucks to 100 But I mean, you know, if you can't get it for anywhere, if you can get this, if you can get this pressing right now without wanting to wait for between 50 and 60, 65 bucks, I think that's, um, you know, a pretty good deal. And I would be more than, more than happy to pick it up for that price. But anything other than that, I think just be patient, wait, pre or, you know, just get a order in at Music Director MoFi and just wait for it. So like I said, it's gatefold. I'll show you another thing as well. I, again, I just want to compare it. Um, this is the vinyl. Most of you have it or seen it. But just, you know, the classic, classic MoFi labels, as you can see here. And again, um, credit 45 RPM. So that's the MoFi uh, look. And again, I will show you the Abbey Road one right away. So this, this pressing was mastered and cut by Krieg Wonder Leach at MoFi in California. It was pre the vinyl was um, pressed at RTI in the States. Now, MoFi, as we all know, use the original master tapes. Now we're gonna say, well, it was, it was digitally recorded. It was, but 
they actually cut the vinyl from the master tapes by hooking up to a digital recording machine, sort of, the, you know, the same one that was probably used for the Sony, uh, the same one that is used that was re recorded um, digital dire straits digitally on, you know, back in 1985. So they would have hooked up to that and uh, mastered it and cut their vinyl straight from the master tapes. Okay. So that's one big difference. I, and I will explain the differences with the Abbey Road one right away as well. This was from the original master tapes from the actual, um, they would have actually had to rig the machine to basically the output to basically get this cut with the master tape. So from the master tapes, okay. And it does say that on here, um, again, all these record companies, in order for this to go to pressing, it always has to be approved by Knopfler and his team or the record label. So, I mean, <laughs> no company is going to, is going to basically say that, um, it was cut from the master tapes if it wasn't because, you know, liabilities, legalities, you know, there's a lot of skin in the game here. So, uh, that's how MoFi did theirs. And again, there's a difference between what MoFi did and what Abbey Road did. So great pressing, um, great sounding vinyl, uh, quiet vinyl, sounds really good on the top end. Um, I really like the bass. It sounds, it sounds edgy, if that, if that makes sense. I find it sounds very edgy. The whole album seems really tight, um, and it's very sonically pre pleasing. A real joy to listen to, and it really feels really full and vibrant, and um, really enjoy the, the uh, MoFi pressing. It is solid, I think, um, Krieg and his st his uh, staff did a really good job um, mastering this album, and I mean I have no complaints about it. Again, the vinyl's solid; it's quiet, sounds great. Absolutely love this album. Now, the only negative I have, and I mean, if you guys have looked it up, there is on side B and on, on around two minutes thirty seconds of "Walk the Line" during that woo hoo part. Sorry, my singing sucks. Um, I have a a skip or a, I guess the the bass just pops up and I tried uh, adjusting my tracking to no avail. Um, I know MoFi, um, it was a lacquer issue apparently and I was reading on Discogs and the numbers they were I guess listed on Discogs was something like um, you know 12,000 to 14,000 was the the issue. So I don't know I mean mine says 10,033 and I've got that sort of that um, bass skip as well. So I didn't purchase this one from MoFi, so I guess I can't get can't get it replaced. But that would be the only negative. I mean, if I would have bought this brand new, um, yeah, I would have been able to get that replaced. But that's that's an unfortunate thing. But what can you do? So that's the MoFi one. Like I said before, it sounds. I mean, it's edgy. Um, I like the sound of the bass, of course, Knopfler's guitar. I mean, I have no complaints about this one. And I just want to now compare it with um, Abbey Rhodes. And I mean, that's the thing about Abbey Rhodes. And I'm going to grab the cover here. Here's Abbey Rhodes. When this came out, I'm like, what, another brother in arms? I mean, holy crow, do they need another one? I don't even know how many they have, but um, this is Abbey Rhodes version. So it's not gatefold. It does have the OB strip. I always like the OB strip. I always like to keep my uh, my records um, in the in the uh, plastic as if if I can. So that's right in the right in the shrink. Again, it's not uh, gatefold. Okay. And a little bit different too, and I'm going to show you this. Labels are different. Nice little colorful label. A little bit different than MoFi's. I mean, if you like labels, there you go. Kind of cool. And they also come with the sleeves. I always put my um, my records in a rice paper sleeve, but they, they come with the paper sleeves with all the lyrics here on the sleeves instead, whereas MoFi has them in the gatefold. And I found this interesting as well. Now, MoFi, or sorry, the Abbey Rhodes half-speed mastering was mastered and cut by Miles Showell out of Abbey Rhodes. He's um, mastered and cut, I think it was Sergeant Pepper. He mastered and, and he cut the Abbey Road um, 50th anniversary. He cut the 50th anniversary uh, Sergeant Pepper, like I said. So what's cool about these uh, half-speed mastering is that they come with this. It's a mastering certificate, half-speed mastering certificate. And I'll just quickly read a little bit here. It says here, this record was pressed from a master cut using a precision technique known as half-speed mastering. 
This procedure requires a source master and the cutting lathe to run at half speed on a specially adapted Newman VMS80 lathe. So that's the one of the big difference. I mean, there's two big differences with this album and with MoFi's. Uh, Miles Showell, he got the original tapes, but he actually cut a high-res digital, and he used that high-res digital as a source to cut the vinyl. And of course, he um, cut the vinyl and he ran it at half speed, whereas MoFi does not master at half speed. Just so as everyone is clear, MoFi does not master at half speed. I think the last um, half speed master that MoFi put out was Beck. Uh, maybe correct me on that if I'm wrong, but again, that's the big difference here. Mo two big differences between the MoFi version and the Abbey Road version. This is half speed mastered. They used a digital, um, they cut from a digital source. So that's the big difference as well. And that's the thing too about uh, digital source. I mean, they're both 45 RPM. They both sound really well, really, really nice. I think where I, where I believe, Mo, I feel personally, I mean, music's a subjective thing, but the MoFi to me is a little bit edgier and it beats, it beats the um, Abbey Road pressing out by a little bit. I feel when, um, when you do a sort of a half speed master, it smooths out the top end so the bass can become a little bit blobby. So I feel this whole this this whole album um, sounds a little bit smoother than than the uh, MoFi version, if that makes sense as well. So more of a warm feeling. So I mean, it's so close. I you know I can tell you right now, if you decide to go out and get the Abbey Road one, then do it. You're not going to be disappointed. If you know, and the, again, there's still lots out there. I think there you could probably get one for real. Like I got this one at my local record store in Vancouver for forty nine ninety five uh, U S. So very good deal. Like I said before, if you're patient, you can um, you know make an order at Music Direct or Mo on the MoFi site for the MoFi version as well. So again, maybe a little bit smoother. Uh, the MoFi a little bit edgier. Top end uh, bass maybe maybe a little bit blobbier, but it's 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 so close that like I said before, if you've got the money and you're a huge Dire Straits fan, I would buy both. Um, that's again what I did as well. So uh, great, you know, it's a great it's a great album. I think Miles Showell, who mastered this one, would probably disagree with me and say no, mine's the best. Or Krieg will disagree with me and say mine's the best. I mean, it's so subjective. These guys, I mean, you got to remember, like I said, I mean, um, in, in order to get this pressing out to us, it has to be signed off by Mark Knopfler, by the record company. So they're not putting out crap. I mean, this is high quality stuff on high quality vinyl and um, you can't go wrong with either one. So I was really happy to listen to this one. I listened to this one a ton over the last couple of days and uh, listened to the MoFi one as well. So I think I'm going to listen to it again after uh, after this as well. So. Guys, I really hope this helps. I really am having fun doing these videos. Um, again, thank you so much for joining my channel. Again, join it. Subscribe now because I can. I want to give away my uh, 50th anniversary Abbey Road. Do it now. Subscribe. Get it done. Until next time, keep spinning those records, playing the music loud. Have a wonderful day.